okay, boom. Tommy G uploaded this yesterday uh, in G County with the hardest essay ever. I'm finna sleep me a rapper. Hey. You're gonna sleep you a rapper? Yes. I'm finna sleep me a rapper. Hey. You're gonna sleep you a rapper? Yes. I what? thought y'all was in the news how y'all hopped out the truth. Someone told us to bring the glizzies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know who told them that. And if everyone's videotaping me, I'm gonna say someone has to join me from the block, otherwise I'm not doing it. Oh man, hold on. Who is it? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tommy G. Today, we're with Peso Peso in G County, baby. Yeah, man, I know what the f going down, man. We in the village, man, G County, man. You know what I'm talking about? Sauce, you don't look like you got a scratch on you. I heard you had a collision. Collision, the universe. Yeah, yeah, it was. These rappers don't even have a life. Now eat them up with a big appetite. Bitch, niggas, I laugh at. Today, we dive into the world of Mexican gangster rapper Peso Peso. Yo, where have I heard of him before? I hit him with the AK, leave him flat like. He takes us through Galveston County, Texas, known to the locals in the streets as G County. In what? G County, Peso grew up fast. You and by the age of 14, he in hopped Texas? off the porch and was active in the streets game bang. Thankfully, he found rapping and he quickly became known for punchlines that were a mixture of super gangster and totally hilarious. Here's some examples. I just flashed up with a chopstick. I just whacked a nigga in a project. And I'm strapped up with a kill tick. You need 50 pounds, I can mail that. And I can't believe my nigga lost his life to a white boy. I keep a Smith and Wesson in the way a nigga this unorthodox style brought him attention from labels, and in 2019, Sauce Walk assigned him to his label, The Sauce Familia, also known as TSF. From that point on, Peso pursued rap with his foot on the gas and has collaborated with artists like Trippy Red, Mexican OT, and Baby Tron. The man people call the Baby hardest Tron! essay ever takes us through his stomping grounds of G County, where we meet his family, bloods, crips, citizens, civilians, and even our dear friend, Certified Trap. Let's begin the episode. Quick announcement before we get into the video. If you want to be fresh for spring, we got the new t-shirt drop on the website. We got Big Yo, Dog Gotta Eat. Spring. It's spring. It's April. Media, a couple versions of Don't Believe the Lies. I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. Thank you so much. And now, guys, to the video. You ain't about that murder, nigga. Stop playing. You ain't talking money, nigga. What you saying? You can call me Mr. Bloody Shirt Stain. And I ball hard like I'm Kurt Hang. Whole lot of ammunition when I'm on the road. Hey. How you doing, brother? What's the f***ing deal? Good to see you, man. I be seeing you a lot, bro. Oh, thank you, man. Oh, look who it is. You're, You're the, the YouTuber. Yes. How old are you, Zay? I am eight. You're like the Aww. flyest eight year old I think I've ever seen in my life. Thank you. You make me dress like I only shop at Walmart and like I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you got one? My B. Certified Trapper. This is a nice, nice place, dude. I appreciate y'all. Not a lot of guys that came from where you came from live in a house like this. Nah, for sure. I mean, I mean not many people, period, live in a house like this. Fact, where I came from, like, I'm like one of the rare few that made it out. Do you feel like you accomplished the American dream? One year old. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I beat the statistics. And so do you consider yourself from Houston? No, I'm from Galveston County. So on your Instagram, I see a lot, it's my time was there. Yeah, uh, that's, that's very Tell important. me what follow-up means to you. You gotta be there for your kids, bro, you feel me? Like, I don't put nothing over my kids, you feel me? Don't get it twisted. I had to sacrifice a lot of time, and still do sometimes, just with work, you feel me? But that's because I want my kids to be able to live a great life, you feel me? What are those, the Gucci sandals 101 or what is that? I just f***ed your bitch. Um, you feel me? What are those, the Gucci sandals 101? <laughs> Nigga said W ankle bracelet. That's what I was thinking, yeah. What is that? I just f***ed your bitch in Dior flip flops. <laughs> Zay, what are your favorite things about your dad? Everything. You're kinda tall. Do you want me to crouch down a little bit more? So I can show you some wrestling moves. How often do you get a private driver with guns on them? Just whenever it's needed, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit. I don't ride with no guns. I don't own no guns. I don't hang with people <laughs> that have guns on them. That's the only way. It gotta be professional, security, protection. I'm just moving right, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> moving smart. You feel me? I'm trying to stay out smart of jail, man. not be in jail. I'm in gallery. White brick. Look at my salary, I'm rich and I'm still shooting bleak. No rap cow, yeah, finna drop another hit. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, bitch. Come in our room. Yo, yo, when like a, when you're at your family's house and one of your nieces or nephews invites you to the room, 
they fuck with you, bro. Okay? You don't get that room invite unless they fuck with you, bro. Feel me? You usually just chill in the living room with the rest of the game, but they got to really fuck with you, dog. Damn, player. Say, do you have any idea what you want to be when you want to grow up? I Kobe, oh, I like this kid, bro. Kobe poster off the rip. That's how he's growing up. Come on, man. I'm glad, like, the kids nowadays, they still, like, admire Kobe because they didn't really see him play the way we seen him play. So, yeah, that shit just made me happy. Plumber. Why? Yeah, I could see you carrying around like six plungers and just. That's like a fighter for Mortal Kombat. Okay, so right across. Oh, he games. He's a gamer. You want to be a rapper? Yeah, that's one of them. Professional streamer. That's also one of them. A gamer? That's what you just said. One astronaut. Yeah, you want to be an astronaut? the cooler room that I've ever had in my life. Oh, see? <laughs> Damn, dude. If the other kids at school don't want to give you their lunch money, you pull that on them? I can hurt them mentally. So the bully will be like, hey, give me your lunch money, nerd. I'll be like, lunch money? Are you broke or something? Because there's no way you don't have lunch money. <laughs> no, he's so adorable. Oh my God. Imagine me impressed by this little kid. Imagine, imagine your kid is in school trying to bully this kid. He's like, oh, imagine if you're so broke, you're asking people for lunch money, you broke fuck. Why don't you tell your broke parents from your broke family to get you some fucking money? Tell your dad to get another job, broke bitch. <laughs> you just leave just like, damn. <laughs> Isn't the whole menu like $5? You give me a dollar, bro. <laughs> hey, bro. Uh, but, hey, I didn't learn how to talk shit until I streamed. How, did he know how, to, how does he know how to talk shit? Who is it? There's someone knocked on the door for sure. Oh, it's you! Hi, Hi, Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Bro, we was doing yo mama jokes at sixth grade. We still didn't know how to cook properly until like high school, really. His dad's a rapper? What does that have to do with anything? Nice to meet you too. When are you gonna make your first song? 10 or 11 or 12. Have you, have you started writing any rap yet? In my shower. Yeah? That's one of the best places <laughs> to rap in, isn't it? Yes. Some of your best thoughts in life come in the shower. When that hot water's hitting you. <laughs> I put my hot water to the max. You just eat a donut? Two. Two? <laughs> oh, there's more donuts. <laughs> you want to co-watch it? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Basically, a hot dog will curve it off. Nah. Dude, kids with the internet, it's like they live in another world than we do. Like, they have all, like, these references to, like, memes, videos, like, do you have a cell phone already? Yes. You're eight years old, you got a cell phone? Yeah. Who are you calling? My mom, my dad, my father. Family, my friends. Do your friends have cell phones? Yeah, most of them. I don't know how I'm ready to bring kids into this world. Nah, anymore. real shit though. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe air! He's so adorable. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Free sauce welcome, man. Sauce, you seen the shit happen? Mm -hmm. Nah, my nigga sauce done flipped his track card like seven times. Zip the real ball. Bunch of nigga in his chin might break his jaw. When that happened with you and you lost control, did you ever feel like, man, uh, this might be it? Yeah, nah, I'm, oh my God. I'm, I knew nothing was gonna happen to me. I, this whole world is like a video game to me. I don't know how I do it every time, but I come out untouched, unscathed, unblemished. You know what I'm saying? You just crashed? Someone says it, okay, bud. <laughs> is he okay? Yeah, he good. He crashed at 130 miles an hour. He was, he was in a high speed chase two nights ago. He's in jail right now. Yo, tell me, tell me why I seen a video of a nigga in a high speed chase in a Corvette, and then the OnStar disabled his car, and the chase ended. They electronically disabled his car. I'm not gonna lie to you, if that's what the future looks like, I'm sticking with my manual vehicles. You're not disabling my car. I don't give a fuck how illegal my actions are or how dangerous. You don't have the right in this free country of America, the United States of America, you don't have the fucking right to disable my fucking car, nigga. What? What, bro? Fuck on star. Houston rapper Sauce Waka is facing charges for leading police on a high speed chase. The mundane was driving 130 miles per hour for more than two miles until he crashed his vehicle. But he'll be getting out like any, any moment. It's probably like tonight. Is a high speed chase mandatory time? Not necessarily. It just depends on your defense. How important is a good lawyer to a rapper? Very important. But like, if you in the streets, period, and you got a little money to play with, that's very important, bro. Cause like, your freedom is worth any dollar in your pocket. Cause if you're locked up, you can't get no dollar. Put no dollars in your pocket. You feel me? Hello? Hey, what you doing? Let them folks know where you at, man. Hey, man, I'm locked up currently right now. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, shit ain't nothing. It's a free Julo campaign, man. Julo. Bro, Chris, stop worrying about my title. They're talking about some. Can y'all change his title to second best gamer in the crib? No way y'all believe that. Chris, stop worrying about my title. Look, if you think it's wrong, prove it. Boot up right now and prove it, boy. Oh, man, where you at, man? Hey, man, free me, man. I'm finna be out there. I'm finna be on that pavement so, man. This shit ain't nothing. Julo's the guy that did a heist on the hot dog stand, right? Like, so he stole all the glizzies? <laughs> Are you the guy that did the heist on the hot dog stand? You stole a bunch of glizzies? I was actually in New York for the first time. Go to my fucking hot dog stand. I'm not even knowing. I got a counterfeit 20 on me. I gave him the $20. Bro, I had to mark it. Mark my shit. Next thing you know, 10 months later, bought it out that day, but 10 months later, it gave me a better indictment. Yo, so you really are away for Glizzy, then? Yeah. I'm Stay uh, optimistic, man, and we hope you come home soon. I really. Wait, how the, how the fuck is you supposed. Bro, who changed the title, bro? Change that shit back, nigga. Who changed the title, bro? Before I really ban Fossabot in this bitch. Came up off a flip phone. <laughs> Your bitch trying to eat me up until my dick gone. You got something tattooed on your face right here. Mm -hmm. What is that? TSL. And what does that stand for? The Sauce Familia. Right. Sauce Family. I met some of these Sauce guys. Every one of them, they got cars, they got jewelry. And that's what Jerry- Bro, change the title, nigga. Better. That's way better. Boom. I was gonna have to ban Foss and I ain't gonna have to do it. It's not just about being fresh. Like clothes, it's about like. I had to hit the grave lifestyle. like Nightbot. There's not a ton of big Mexican rappers. Why do you think that is? Hip hop wasn't like for Mexicans. So like Mexicans just started getting relevant. Like we just got in the door. It was a couple Mexicans before me, but as far as like actually like coming with the style that I came with, I opened that door back. Cause you had the South Park Mexicans. They all like did their thing back in the day. Who are some Mexican artists that people should be looking out for if they haven't heard of them already? Mexican OT, D Baby, Brick Wolfpack, Chen K Wardo. It's so many, bro. I forget. It seems like it's starting to move the culture now. Right. And what are your goals as a father? Show my son what to do for his kids. How to be a man, you feel me? Is it ever tough, like, knowing how you grew up compared to how your son grew up? Like, you almost feel like he doesn't understand what real struggle is, or is there any uh, element of that? What's crazy is my son remembers, cause you know, my son moved out the hood whenever he was probably like three years old, and he has a great memory, so he still remembers. Like, was it hard to move out of the hood? As far as like, once you left, were there- His, his son remembers, like, the ages of one, two, and three? What? Well, that is nuts. Yo, not your sister. Thank you so much for the five gifted subs. W5 gifties in the chat. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Are there any feelings of like missing it or? When I first left, I was always coming back. But I even had got a spot in the hood. I couldn't all the way to leave, you feel me? After a while, I just had to just learn that like, if God got me out. Happy birthday, by the way. When Hopefully, get... hey, Sparati, thank you for the five get the subs too, nigga. Appreciate you. It's called Trauma Agent. Wait, so y'all really remember shit from when you was three and stuff like that? I like have one faded memory, maybe maximum. Dead ass, bro. Hey, uh, thank you so much for the five, Sparati. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Uh, not your sister. Thank you for the five. Son, 2018. You ever been locked up before? Yeah. I was locked up my whole juvenile life. Let's talk about Peso's childhood. Things were going okay until the age of eight, where his mom began a long pattern of being in and out of jail. And at this time, his dad was making a living selling dope. By 10 years old, Damn. Peso was in and out of juvie for robbing and getting caught with drugs. And by 14, he was active in the streets. So for Peso to be in this house, a family man, out of jail and living prosperous, it's truly an against the odds story. What was it like? Bring the jail shit, you know what I'm saying? Just being away from your family and away from home, it's just, after a while, it's hard feeling like that, like, jail was my home. What was the role of your dad in your life? My dad was in and out of my life. My dad's always been there as far as, like, contact-wise, you feel me? My pops in the streets, too. When you're on tour, is it hard being away from home? Yeah, shit, actually. Like, riding in cars all day, hopping on planes every fucking hour. It's tired after a while, for sure. They wasn't fucking with me when I ain't had shit up in my kitchen. I got some fame, I got some change, and now they all up in my business. I told my young and keep it dangerous. He been walking with a fit, and now this bitch, she think I. I don't know why, chat. Like, I always find it, like, maybe I'm old, but I just feel like it's a way crazier flex to invest $4 million in body armor and come out with $100 million in 10 years. You know, like, I'm like, you gotta do, you have to be a genius to do that. Like, that's tough.
I don't know. I, I'm like, I guess I'm not impressed by like cars and chains no more. I don't know if that shit still works on y'all niggas. Like maybe it does, but like when I see cars and chains, I don't think they're rich no more. I just think like they could afford that. Does that make sense? I love her cause I'm all up in the kit locked in that slam machine. Answer for me. This money straight up out the money. Nice to meet you. Nice to look at all that. Because, like, I think some people spend all their money to make it look like they have money. And unfortunately, in rap, you have to move like that. Otherwise, niggas don't respect you. So it's, like, almost like obligatory spending to make yourself and your brand look more rich than it needs to be. But it ends up costing you more money. To, it costs you all your money to do that. You're dazzling, man. Yeah, thank you. Sauce, you don't look like you got a scratch on you. I heard you had a collision. The person you see here is the TSF CEO, Sauce Walker. We are seeing him the day after he survived a high-speed crash. The day in the wee after? hours of December 6th, he ran a red light and a police officer attempted to pull him over. He did the dash and took his car to 130 miles per hour before crashing shortly after. He got a felony for evading, posted bond, and then sometime after, he went to the Sauce factory to get a haircut, and that's when we bumped into him. You got one, I thought it was going on. What was going through your mind when things went down? Oh, well. why, he, why did he say it on camera? <laughs> <laughs> Two high speed chases that day, though. Down there, three. You remember what made you lose control? The street changed. I mean, before I realized it was going to turn into a turn in the street and it's bumps in the street. We're going to the Toyota Center. <laughs> okay. Right, right, right. It's south open enough for us. Mm. Oh, That's going to be a big one. El Chapo! They told me you was the most yeah. gangster motherfucker in Milwaukee. <laughs> one of them. I told them Oh, I'm thinking like, ain't no way El Chapo's making an appearance. I'm like, damn, nigga, I wasn't prepared for that. Be a big one. El Chapo. They told me you was the most yeah. gangster motherfucker in Milwaukee. <laughs> one of them. I tell them I know Oh, for a second. Do you guys have any applications for TSF? <laughs> now, at the moment, I would have to decline. I'll send you a cover letter and an email tonight, okay? Okay, Thomas. So what do you do? I'm a YouTuber, documentary YouTube. guy. We're doing a story on Peso Peso today. All right, all right. How much information do you have on Peso Peso so far? I like to do minimal research before I go places. Do you know where he's so, from? Galveston County. Okay, okay. G County. G County. When did he start rapping? He got signed in 2018. This is true. But was he rapping prior to, or did he start rapping? I feel like he's a guy that was rapping when he was still in, the, in his mother's womb. No, okay, okay. I like that answer. I I have a, a trivia question for you. Ah. Who is the hardest essay ever? Peso, peso. Ding, ding, ding. These diamonds came from out the dirt and now they in. I'm in the yard to the floor like I'm Chris. You think about reaching for my chain, man, I will. So what goes down here? It's recording studio, people chill. Then where we hang at, and where we kick it at, you feel me? Where we make music at, where we come up with million dollar plans at, you know what I'm saying? That's where everything musically happens at. That's do you where... record here? I do, actually. Okay. It's still under construction. Do you like to sit when you record? Both. Okay. It depends on how I'm feeling. Yeah. But sometimes I gotta stand up because I'm the type of rapper where like I be getting all into it when I rap. I be like, you know what I'm saying? I put my yeah. face real close to the mic and my head butt that bitch, you know what I'm saying? Everyone has a different style. We are in Galveston County, aka G County, Texas. This is where Peso Peso grew up at. Yo, how, up. Far, how far is Galveston? Uh, Mark tweets about you. I I'll check it after. How far is Galveston from Houston? Four Peso Peso has gotten here. Sometimes 45 minutes? You pull up, it's like, holy shit. Who are you, white boy? Or, who are you, boy? They call this G County. Yeah. What's the local news channel around here? I 45. Reporter live from I 45. Oh, we ain't. And this. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that was them. And they did not seem like they were too fond of the camera. Good yeah. to meet you, brother. How you doing? Say. The fellows over here were giving us sketchy looks. They thought that we were from the news or something. Nah, yeah, good. These my people. What do you call this spot? We're in the Ville. The Ville? The block. Yeah, yeah. And is this where Peso grew up? See, this is where I'm from, shit. It's like we're in the same county, but shit. Peso from Tech City, you feel me? But it's like 10 minutes away. When'd you meet Peso? Three, four years now. What's up, Tommy? Nice I'm to meet Bishop. you. I'm Bishop. I'm finna sleep me a rapper. Baby. You're gonna sleep you a rapper? Yeah, sleep me a rapper. Things are going down in the Ville, huh? <laughs> I thought y'all was in the news. How y'all hopped out the truck? <laughs> finna shoot a video. Y'all gotta record. You guys are gonna do a video. music video tonight? Yeah, y'all yeah. finna do it right now. Can anyone do a good British accent? Any sort of accent. British, man. Fuck. Yeah, Olaf. 
<laughs> Hola, okay, okay. Is it hard being trans in the hood? I like no trans. Forty percent of America is dangerously medically obese. Yeah. What do you think about that, and how would you change that? Start uh, going to the gym and shit. You know do you I'm work saying? out? Nah, I try to. I don't be doing that. I be picking up that money, pick up the jury. <laughs> you think it's hard to be trans in the hood? What? Come on, bro. You can't be asking no trend questions bro. around a uh, parking lot full of gangsters, bro. We don't, we don't know about that, but we ain't against none of that shit. You're doing well as a rapper. What are some investments you've made or want to make in the future? Open up a body shop. I ain't never worked on a car before, but a lot. Me too. Me too, dead ass. I people be wrecking their cars, you feel me? Yep. Like that's something that happens every day. When people drive like Sauce Walker, your business will be booming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sauce <laughs> Walker gonna have to go see a nigga like me, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> bro, trying being not to, a rapper. Hood niggas trying not to get canceled is crazy, bro. You were not brand friendly to begin with, brother man. <laughs> Your songs are not brand friendly. You don't have to worry about that. Trust me. It was not an option. What's a career you would choose? I still, you know what I'm saying, be doing what I was doing for rap. Fake sales? I ain't seen nothing else other than rap. I ain't never had no full-time job. Or I ain't go to school. I only had rap or the street. That's it. What's something you learned in the streets? Like staying on point, staying alert, and thinking before you do shit. You'll be lollygagging and shit, and then two seconds later, you'll be in the jail cell. Do you guys have any <laughs> wild stories of something that happened on the job? Like, hey, so hired these two security guards for the night to make sure no one was finna try him in the streets as we walked around the trenches. Been shot, been shot at, been shot people. You name it, man. I got was, scars on my legs. And what was the situation where you got shot at? They were choking a, a female out and we came over there to break it up and they did a drive-by on us. A drive-by for helping a woman getting beat up? Yes, sir. That's we crazy. Tried. What are some warning signs that shit's about to go down? I can start. I'm from Milwaukee. If someone says, on my mama, things are starting to escalate. I start seeing people move around. Suspicious cars. We own it. Any cars that we we don't know, we own it. What if someone yells, Damn. I'm going to the trunk? He's at least. Make, oh, he's <laughs> making it to the trunk. You ain't gonna get to turn around. Tell me about your childhood. What were you doing as a young man? I played baseball when I was probably like eight, nine years old. But were you good? I was like, that shit got boring. You know what I'm saying? I fell in love with other shit. Like, what were you doing at, let's say, 12 or 14 years old? That I was already hustling and shit. Spent a lot of my childhood in jail. What's Juvie Damn. like? Shit, boring. So many rappers are looking to break through. They're looking to get signed. What is your advice to rappers out there? You just gotta yeah. want that shit. You just gotta be handling your business. Someone said he was ass. Bro, just because he got bored of baseball doesn't mean he was ass. Bro, people get bored of things sometimes. That's normal. What Whatever you believe in, you just gotta do that I shit. Not, yeah. That man got guns. This shit, I thought that shit was bullshit. <laughs> I heard of you, my uh, nephew named Davin. That's my bro. So okay. now you my nephew. Okay. Now I'm getting out the project? <laughs> nah, thanks. No, I'm saying you like the house. I want some goals in my teeth too, a little bit, you know? Nah, I'm gonna look for you a job. I can't work, job. my boy, I get a little disability, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> How long you lived here for? 23 years. Are you a mom? Yes, I have Damn. one daughter. Okay, what's it like raising kids in 2023? It's different. They need some ass whippings, like yeah. where we came from. Like, I came from uh, everywhere. Everybody disciplined the kids when they- I'm not gonna lie, you can't even say that on YouTube without uh, Child Protective Services tapping in. Bro, one time chat, I accidentally thought I was in a safe space. <laughs> I thought it was very normal. And I was like, yeah, my mom beat my ass yesterday. I said something to that nature. And the teacher had overheard me. And she was like, whoa, in her head, she was like, the alarms is going off. Like, what's all this down? And she was like, no, no, no. And she's like, well, she told the principal, hey, uh, Dean, can you please go to the principal's office? And whole class of them be like, nigga, what'd you do? I'm like, I don't know, nigga, but I'm not being in class. Like, I go down to principal's office. He's like, commencement of the annual purge sanctioned by the U.S. government. Weapons of class four and lower have been authorized for use during the purge. All other weapons are restricted. Government officials of ranking 10 have been granted immunity from the purge and shall not be harmed. Commencing at the siren, any and all crime, including murder, will be legal for 12 continuous hours. Police, fire, and emergency medical services will be unavailable until tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. when the purge concludes. Blessed be our new founding fathers and America, a nation reborn. May God be with you all. So I step in a principal's office. Nigga looks me dead in my eyes and says, I heard you say you get beat at home. I don't even realize this is like a potential issue. I'm like, yeah, 
I'm the, everybody gets beat. All my friends get beat. I get beat. Nigga, everybody gets beat. It wasn't a crazy beating. I just got beat. And he was like, no, 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 no. What test. type of beating? I'm like, I don't know. Principle, it depends. Sometimes the hanger. Sometimes it's a belt. Sometimes the belt buckle. Sometimes it's a hand. Sometimes she throws a slipper. I'm not sure. And he goes. And then I realized by his face that I said too much. He called my mom. My mom was my mom was at work. She's like, can I call you back? Fire and emergency medical services. <laughs> so you need time to regroup. Boom, I go home. Last thing he tells me before I go home, he says, they're not allowed to hit you with items, but she is allowed to hit you with her hand. And I'm like, who the fuck is this nigga telling me what my mom can and can't hit me with? This nigga gets to make the rules? Bro, I'd rather her hit me than take my controller, so. Hey, if I gotta take this ass beating to play GameCube in the weekend, I'm, I'm fine with it, bro. It is what it is. Bro, I get home. And I'm thinking to myself, like, bro, I fucked up. I'm like, I'm like, I'm home thinking, like, yo, I might not make it to tomorrow. This level of fuck up. I'm this panicking, bro. This is your so I wait patiently for my mom to get home. She gets home at the work. The annual purge sanctioned by the U.S. government. Weapons of class four and lower have been authorized for use during the purge. And she just gave me like a kind lecture about not saying nothing to the principal. I was like, oh my God, I really thought my life was over. <laughs> I used to get beat for losing a hat. <laughs> they was out of line. Mm -hmm. But nowadays you can't discipline kids, tell them nothing wrong or nothing like that because they might kill you, come back and kill you. So there's a lot of young guns around here and there's a lot of young people that are gonna watch this. What advice do you have for them? When people are telling you something, go with the instinct, you know, cause sometimes people will lead you wrong. If you have older people in your life, kinda go to them for mentor. The world will turn your curve and you'll end up on drugs on the curve. Have a good night. Thank y'all. Thank you for your wisdom. Clipping this to your mom. <laughs> She's probably gonna see it. What does rent go for in this area? Down to a dollar. A thousand bucks for rent? A dollar. A dollar? One dollar. Oh, okay, okay. I'll section it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, fresh out of jail, made a hundred K. Tell my runner, need my money, nigga, underlay. Your trap slow, you be breaking down an ounce a day. We brought a present for you. Someone told us to bring the glizzies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who told them that. I'll eat a glizzy if someone else eats one with me. I'm not gonna be the only guy eating show, a glizzy. You gotta, you gotta show us how you do exactly. it. And if it everyone's cold. videotaping me, I'm gonna say someone has to join me from the block, otherwise I'm not doing it. Oh man, come on. <laughs> I got three glizzies here, I need one person to join me. We got a volunteer? Yeah, volunteer. I'm here to prove that you can oh, eat glizzies shit. anywhere and you should feel comfortable doing it. This is America. What the f I'm gonna sue your ass too if something happens to me. Something going on with you. Can we at least get a- What if auntie just- Eats it in one bite. All right, okay, no. I, I dead ass need to go outside more. This is, no, <laughs> like, I shouldn't even be having these thoughts. Like, my brain is fried, my nigga. Chant, guys, glizzy. Glizzy, glizzy. Eat the weenie, eat the weenie, eat the weenie. Eat the weenie. Eat the weenie. I, can, I, can, I, can, I can eat a glizzy in two bites, chat. I can eat that glizzy in two bites for sure. Hey, you should have brought something to drink. Hell, we're gonna eat a damn dry ass uh, hot no dog ketchup, with no damn no cleansing mayo, this on it. No right, mustard. Right. Mm -hmm. What the fuck is that, Mickey? Something going on. What, what's the wrong with this weenie? No, this is 100% beef. What you buy that? Gas station. So why you want somebody to eat this with you? People are scared to eat glizzies, and I'm trying to break the, the stereotype of glizzies. A what? Hot dogs. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Here we go. This is probably the first time in 10 years that in this black area. and white people ate together? No, just that we ate glizzies in public. I feel famous. Yeah. Oh, yo, I was watching a video chat about, I can't even say this on the internet actually, they might put a hit out on me. I'm getting the impression that you guys are disappointed with the glizzy thing. Uh, yeah. we, we don't be fucking with them glizzies and shit. For next time I visit, I'll probably bring hamburgers yeah, instead. Man. You say hamburger. Is that better or is that homo too? Bring, bring hamburgers for sure. I'm getting the impression I should never come back here ever again in my life. <laughs> It's cool. All right, so we got a little music video going on behind us. The whole block's out. Damn, Tommy. Last nigga tried to run, you know them bullets ate them up. They caught him lacking in the camp. Carry on. There's nobody here. So y'all good, carry on.
Bam! One time for the one time. <laughs> is this normal during a music yeah. video shoot? It's my right, time, okay. that's why, you know. Pacer's gonna be taking us to someone he wants us to meet, so we'll see you guys there. When you're trying to be a comedian, some things fall flat, some things go well. I'm trying to make people laugh. That's part of the goal. I really, that's one of the things I really like to do, is try and lighten people's mood, do something silly. I'll be the butt of the joke if I need to be. Now we're gonna go back on more of a serious note, and we're gonna be talking with somebody who just had a son become incarcerated for 12 years. Jesus. And someone that Peso considers like a, a mom or like a grandma. All that goddamn Texas oil. This is actually kind of a surreal thing to drive through. Like you see all this, all this. Yo, I don't know if this is like the kid in me, but every time I see a factory, I just think they make oil in it. It don't matter how small the factory is, I know oil is being made in that factory. <laughs> I don't actually know what happens in factories, I'm gonna be honest with you, I know this man. <laughs> Refinery and machinery. The plant we see here is Marathon Petroleum Galveston Bay Refinery. It's the third largest refinery in the United it. States. It can I refine nearly 600,000 barrels of oil I per day, it. which is enough to fill up to 750,000 gas tanks. It's one of the major employers of the area, employing about 1,500 <laughs> people. However, the plant is also the largest emitter of benzene in the United States. Benzene is a major carcinogen that the Department of Human Services has linked to leukemia with long term what exposure. The fuck? Moreover, the plant has had its fair share of emissions incidents. On December 17, of 2023, a shelter in place order was issued for Texas City residents after a pump failure caused 10,000 pounds of pollutants to be released into the air and oh, caused air quality no. issues. These stories are ones we have to wrestle with as Americans. On one hand, a plant like this puts food on the table for thousands of people in the area in an increasingly tough job market, and it also powers the transportation for hundreds of thousands of drivers. On the other hand, the local population is at major risk of pollution and health risks. But I suppose that's just the yin and yang of life. It is amazing, like oil is what make, makes the world run. You guys see all that refinery stuff when we were driving past? Yeah. A lot of people work there. There's more people that work there than live in the city. I think it's like 60,000 people in Texas City, oh, but okay. it's like a hundred and something. So that's big people business. That work in there. Most what? Work in the plant, they live, they, they live, they here. live here. That's hard work, isn't it? Yeah. Next, we go to meet Chantel, a woman that Peso considers a mother figure and a mom that has seen the effects of street life hit her sons firsthand. Here's what she had to people? say. We in the bottom, you know what I'm talking in about? The bottom, the bottom of the, the bottom, bitty, you know what in what the saying? big bitty, cause I miss my nigga. Mm. This is my son. Nah, for real, she raised me since a pup. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm a mama, I like cubs. How old was he when you met him? Eleven. Yeah. Shit, his life was hard, but I think the love I gave him made it easier because you could come talk to me, tell me, hi, lady. Hey. And when that phone ring, I still got the same number I had since oh, I've been in Texas. And I've been out here since Katrina. Did you move here after Katrina? Damn. So we just drove past the refinery. This is an oil town. Yeah, these these motherfuckers always leaking some shit around here. Is it toxic in the air? I think it is. Is it a tough world to raise a boy right now? I hate for people to say a woman can't raise a man. Cause when that father is not there more times than not that mom, my, that mama is the one that got that man. All my sons that I done gave some knowledge to growing up, making sure they go to school, making sure they eating, making sure they clothes clean because they didn't have nobody. Don't tell me a woman can't make a man. Who are you guys saying free at the beginning of this? Kaj and Julo. Okay. my son and his how much time is he facing? That's what I'm saying. What goes to your head when you, when you hear that kind of sentence? It's deafening. Like I couldn't hear nothing when they said it. As far as I know, they ain't gave Jewel no time yet. So it's another heartbreak, you know? Preach, mom. And if you were mayor, president, in a position of power and you could influence change, what would you do to turn people away from the street path and show them another? First thing I would do is make Texas equal to what your income is. Change the housing, change the atmosphere. If you don't give people nothing to live for, you make it hard for them to live. If they don't see a goal at the end of the tunnel, that's that's a hard life. It's gonna take somebody to go into those communities and put some income into, into those communities. Make the shit where somebody won't live there. If it's toe up, it got mold, ceilings falling in, children can't take a bath, like that's a fucking problem. Mm -hmm. If nobody don't put nothing into the low income communities, it will never fucking change. All the money these motherfuckers make out here in these plants and they pumping this fucking shit in the air. You think they give a fuck? They leaked some shit called benzene some years ago. This shit causes nausea, tremors, like all kind of shit, short breath. I Man, so many different things. Each person affected by that shit got a hundred and fifty-seven dollars. Oh, come on now.
Come on now, would that even cover like one treatment, brother man? That would that wouldn't even cover a fucking consultation at the doctor's office, actually. <laughs> at least in Atlanta, it fucking wouldn't. That shit, it wouldn't even. It might it might cover the gas bill <laughs> to and from the doctor's office. Why the plants got the rest? Make that make sense. If the government don't take the time and put some money into that shit, it will never f***ing change. And I don't mean just rebuild it and make, make it look like paper mache like they did with New Orleans after Katrina. Did you grow up in the Houston or that Texas no, New City Orleans. area? When I was growing up, we used to step over dead bodies going to school in the morning in the project. But the rebuild, they opened them up. They just took away the amount of housing available to people. That's why so many people from New Orleans didn't go back. Because there was nowhere to go back to. They already were planning to knock them down or remodel them is what they were telling the residents when in all actuality they, they intended to completely knock them down. What advice do you have to the youth out there, the young folks out there, the young guns? Man, listen to y'all people. Nobody don't give a f about you like the people that was your blood. Your mama, your daddy, and your grandparents. Those people that genuinely care and love for you. When that phone ring, they're gonna get up and run. You know why? Because that's the love they have for you. So just because they're telling you something you don't wanna hear, don't mean not to listen. I'm proud of them, because a lot of people don't make it. Is there any advice you would give to Mario Peso? Man, keep on going and stay just doing just what you've been doing, chilling and making that money. Mama Chantel, see? pleasure. She's so wise. All right, so Peso's taking us to an important landmark in his history. We're gonna see what it is. This was the stove. I just all bore it out. <laughs> so my shit was happening. When I was a kid, I seen somebody get stabbed right here. Niggas like got right here. Like, how old were you when that happened? Six or seven. It used to be an apartment complex right here. When I was in the fifth grade, I seen a dolphin smash another dolphin head in to what eyeball popped out. And then the nigga got on the bike and rode to work. What do you think that does to a mind of a child to see that kind of stuff? I ain't gonna lie. I don't know what it did to me. You know what I'm saying? I just kept it pushing. It make you numb. It make you not give a f about violence and death. Everyone's got a matching. Yeah, table. look, these are all Texas video. Oh, pieces, yeah, original bottle. This is a hood yeah, pin. Big city. Check I'm right there. Check the chest. Check the hood. Uh oh. Who is that? Why do, why do niggas do that? Like, bro, you could park anywhere. You, like, bro, you know you have tents. Why, <laughs> why are you creating a scene, my nigga? You know what you're doing, bro. You know what you're doing, dog. I guess they know each other now. <laughs> oh, I thought they said they know all the cars. <laughs> hey, I thought them niggas said they know all the cars. Hey, I done spooked the nigga at the, uh, I spooked the nigga when I was in my black wing a couple weeks ago. Cause my black wing tents is dumb dark, bro. And we rolled up and popped out. Four people just popped out and all walked in one direction. Nigga panicked, bro. I'm not gonna lie. It was like 4 a.m. too. Folks, in conclusion, what we covered today. We pulled up to the village project. Niggas, village. niggas be in rental sometimes, but then you kind of have to move like you're in a rental, right? If I, if I would just roll my windows down. Boom. Niggas could see me. They know who I am. And we pulled up to the east side. We went to Mama Chantel House in the bottom. Texas city. Bottom, bottom of the bottom bitty. Right you know what I'm saying? Thank you for joining us, folks. Sorry about the glizzies, and we'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> hey, don't you video, Tommy. Don't give a fuck if you fear me. And every time I go to jail, none of them hating niggas cheering. You know what it is, yo? Tommy videos, Tommy's videos show me like a different side of Texas, bro. Because every time I went to Texas, um, it's not what I've seen here at all. <laughs> at all, bro. Oh, so you like the video? Boom. You, you're gonna like that one too, man. Go ahead, just. Bro, click the link. What that? Bro, that's what I be saying. Like.